going to show you a quick way to make a mask. We're going to start with a scrap piece of paper and we're going to fold this in half to make our own template. And then I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to draw half of my mask design. Then while it is still folded, I'm going to cut this so that my template is symmetrical, meaning the same on both sides. Now to cut out this eye, I'm going to slightly fold it, make a little cut, put my scissors through, and cut that out. Then to make sure the eyes are in the same spot, I'm going to trace around inside that hole. Again, slightly cut it. That way my eye holes are in the correct location. This might be a good time to test it and make sure it fits over your face. Then Mrs. Hayes has some longer pieces of cardboard cut for masks. These are stacked up next to where the class box is located. Then what I'm going to do is hold this in place and trace around my stencil or template. Now if I didn't like my template, I'd want to do it over again. So now that I've got that, I'm going to start cutting it out. It helps if you score first before you cut. So when I score, I'm keeping my scissor blades closed and I'm always pulling away from myself. I'm using my finger on the top to help press down. Now Mrs. Hayes does have a saw, cardboard saw to help you cut out the holes. If you want to try and cut them out yourself, you can score, but we always keep our scissor blades closed. So bring this to Mrs. Hayes if you want her to cut that out with the cardboard saw. Then when you cut out complicated shapes like this, it's helpful if you do what's called bubble cuts. So we're gonna cut off sections at a time, not being too concerned about how close we're getting to our shape. Now, if we want to make this mask curved, we are going to score the entire surface. After I've scored it, it makes it very easy to bend and curve. When you're ready to decorate it, the first thing you might want to do is make your edges a little bit smoother and the paper tape is an easy way to do this. I'm just using a slightly wet paper towel. You can also use the sponges in the cardboard center, but we can Fold this around the edges and that will make your cardboard smoother. When you do this, you're going to want to overlap them. And I ripped mine shorter so that it wouldn't cover up all of my mask. If your gum tape, paper tape is not sticking, it might be that your sponge or your paper towel is not quite wet enough. So add a few more drops of water. If they keep falling off, it also might mean that it's too wet. So it needs to be just right. I can also use this to make my eye hole area smoother too. So this can be used as a way to add finishing touches and refine your work and make it look more finished. And you can actually do this with any cardboard artwork that you're making. Use this as a finishing refinement step. Once you've smoothed all your edges with gum tape, then you might want to think about how you're going to decorate this. You could paint it, you could draw on it with oil pastels or markers. You could also go to the collage center and get some of these you know, smaller pieces of paper, rip them, cut them. You could start layering them on top of your mask. Remember, just a dot, not a lot. And you could start adding 
things on top this way. Now these score marks, you might have to re-bend your mask after you add collage items. But the nice thing about collage items is you can also wrap it around the edge of your cardboard too. And that can be another way to finish your edges. You will have to do some dots of glue on the back. If these are flat, you can put them in the drying rack to dry. Just make sure that your name and class goes on the back. If they're more three-dimensional and they are wet, they are going to have to go on the cardboard shelf back by the cardboard center. You can also punch holes. You can attach a stick to this to hold it. So there are lots of options. Talk with people at your table about some ideas that you might have for a mask.